Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So I figured what I'm Hi. gonna do. I am um in biscuit. In biscuit. <laughs> Daddy biscuit. Daddy's biscuit. Um I figured what I'm gonna do. Yeah, yeah, biscuit, well done for Phoebe, good girl. What I'm gonna do is I obviously filmed my library book haul. But uh, I still want to go out and rent out books, but my library card is full of books. So, right, um, he's showing you things as a haul. We don't need to do this one, babe, today. Why don't you go into your book and your room and go and read some stories? So, like I was saying, okay. before my child got involved, I am going to the library again today, but I wanted to do a wrap up of the book before I returned it. So, since I filmed my haul, I have read one, but it's literally only been a couple of days. So, I'm just going to do it in instalments and just film and combine as I go. So, the one I started with is One of Us Is Lying by Karen M. McManus. Never read any of her books before, but obviously I saw it hyped up on um, Booktube and all of that sort of thing. So I just wanted to sit down and talk about my thoughts about it. I will do a like non-spoiler section and then I'll obviously go into depth and start talking about the book. It's basically about five teenagers that are at high school together. You've got a mix of people, whether they're popular or not. Um, and they all go into detention. One of the boys called Simon dies in detention and it's the story about that it's done from all four of their point of views which i wasn't expect i don't know what i thought but i wasn't expecting that um and it's about how they sort of come together and try and figure out what actually happened because they all say they're innocent but obviously someone's to blame because they he died in detention there was only the four of them and the teacher in there so that is the premise of the book and there's not really much else I can say about it. I did find it, I didn't relate to any of the characters at all. Um, there was a lot of chopping and changing because there's four POVs to read from. It got a little bit, com not confusing, but you, because there's not much from each character, not much like depth and exploration with each of them because obviously they need to do the story within like 350 pages. So you don't really feel connected to any of the characters, if that makes sense. Um, but I read it really fast just because I wanted to know what happened. It wasn't like gripping or like scary. I thought it'd be quite spooky, but it wasn't that. I enjoyed it. It's definitely YA. Um, there's some classic tropes in here as well, which I won't go into now because obviously a non-spoiler section. But yeah, I would recommend it. I wouldn't have, like, I wouldn't buy it, but if you can get it from a library, I'd give it a go. So yeah, that is the one of us is lying. I'm going to have to edit this so you're able to, like, come back and watch my next review within this video. I'm not too sure how I'm going to do it, but I'll figure it out. Um, I might write something down in the description so then you can see maybe like timestamps as to when you can come back to read a review. I'll do that. Anyway, spoiler section coming now about this book. Right. Mm. I liked it. I'd give it a three stars. Three out of five stars on Goodreads. I did find it a bit dull and a little bit tedious, but at the same time I was intrigued and I wanted to know what happened. I guessed pretty much halfway through when they were all saying that they were innocent. I, I just thought, like, when I was reading it, I was like, how could any of them actually do it? And, um, like, he got poisoned with, um, it was like a nut oil and he's allergic to nuts, Simon. And... I just thought how could any of them actually do it and whilst I was reading them and like getting to learn about the characters I didn't I didn't think that any of them would have done it and then I got halfway through first of all I thought it was the teacher because they weren't really talking about the teacher at all and he didn't really have much of a of a storyline which didn't make any sense to me that he was completely written off so I thought maybe it was the teacher but halfway through I thought he did it himself and I was right and it wasn't like a big twist for me I can imagine if you don't know then it is a big shock but halfway through them when they were talking about how he was so bitter and he was depressed and all of that I thought he it was definitely planned and there was some sort of suicide in it I didn't really understand how Jake um was involved who was Addie was Addie yeah it was Addie was the girl Jake was her boyfriend and he was quite bitter and not very nice. I didn't really get why he was involved. 
not really i mean i do understand it but i don't feel like that was really realistic i feel like it was quite extreme i didn't really like the romance either if i'm being completely honest it's just one of those typical tropes in one of these books where it's like the bad boy who does drugs and then the really good girl who's going to go to like a really big university sort of get together and it's one of those it's unexpected but it's expected sort of thing um i liked the little late night chats that they had like staying on the phone and all of that i liked that but i just thought it was i don't know and then when he pushed her away and stuff i just thought well oh, it's, it's a bit shit um but that's just my opinion on it the whole um thing with what's his name cooper being a baseball guy and having to let down his girlfriend because he's actually gay i saw that coming a mile off again that wasn't a shock for me Chris with a K and I instantly thought he has a secret he's not bothered about the whole rumour started by Simon about him like taking is it drugs or whatever for his baseball career I definitely knew it was the gay thing so that's the I think that's why I struggled with this book I didn't struggle with it because I read it within like two days but that's why I didn't love it as much just because the tropes and the storylines are quite generic give me a high five too um, slow baby Give me a high five, too sir. Give me a high five. Hey! A part, um, a baby. You want Topsy and Tim baby? Yeah. Okay. A hair one. Pardon? Hair. Hair one? Yeah. You've got a hair one already. Anyway, I'm going to wrap up this section. Let me know if you have read this. Leave comments down below. Um, but maybe at the top of your comment put like spoilers for this book like below just so you don't or people that are reading comments don't get spoiled if they want to read it I'm trying to make it as easy as possible to discuss it but also not for people to get spoiled if that makes sense so yeah let me know your thoughts if you've read it DM me on Instagram follow my Instagram book club it's book club with Jess um, and then we can also chat on there so yeah that is my review for this one I don't know what I'm gonna start next I've still got that whole pile. I'm thinking maybe Caravel. I'm not too sure. I might find something else today. If I do, I'll quickly pop on and do a little update. But yes, this one is now going back. Hi everyone. So my next little book chat of my library rental section is due. I finished this. And just looking at it and thinking about it just brings me all the feels so i'm not actually going to discuss it in this video i'm going to do its own separate video which i'm going to try and get up before this one goes up you can see that i have made pointers and stuff in it i have never ever done this for a book which i think says a lot about how i feel about it probably the best book one of the best books i have ever read one of my favorites that will stay with me probably for life that's how much i just no words just tears so i'm going to do my own review but after reading that i was in a mourning phase and i was like i don't know what to read i don't know what my brain is ready for so i went for something that i don't normally go for and that was this one follow me back by nikki clock the premise of the book is this girl goes missing and they're investigation takes him to the new guy in town new guy he's been there for about a year called Aiden and they look through her laptop and they see that they've got or Aiden and this girl that went missing Lizzie have got history um because they used to chat on MSN that's the whole reason why I got it because it just takes me back to my day I say MSN online messaging but I refer to it as MSN because that's what it used to be back in the day for me and um that's basically it so they trace him and they keep asking him like what do you know and all of this um because they think that he's a key suspect but he just spoke to her and they had like a thing going on back in the day that is the premise of the book that it's all like oh will they find her is she alive has she gone missing has she done it herself blah blah blah, blah. but i recommend it probably not I rated it a two star. I read this in a day, but that's not because I enjoyed it. I read it because I wanted to know, whoops, I wanted to know what happened and I just skim read it pretty much. Um, I could skip out quite a lot of just rubbish. So <laughs> I, I wasn't a massive fan, but I needed something that would just take my mind off of this. And yeah, I didn't want anything too heavy. So I guess it wasn't that. You know, I don't really know what to say about this. I just thought it was really rubbish. Um, 
didn't really like the main character. I didn't, I did, the thing is, I didn't really care about what happened. It was quite, it was, I think because it's a YA book, it was just quite mild. I don't know what I expected. I just felt like it was, I don't know what's going on outside. Sorry about the background noise. I just felt there was a lot of unnecessary things going on. Um, when, because the, there was a fake profile called Hal and we assumed that Hal was the guy that was meeting up or messaging Lizzie to be like, come and meet me. It was actually Aiden, the main character, because she ignored him on her, on his messenger. And so he made a fake one. And the whole time, it just really irritated me when I found that out, because I was like, so he's been lying to us this whole time. And it just didn't didn't feel right. I didn't like that, that he was like deceiving the readers. Um, the ending I thought was pretty naff, how it turned out to be the stepdad that hacked the profile, got and like met up with her and stuff. And then she, she went to kiss him or something and then he pushed her and she smacked her head on a bollard and then he kept her in the basement. I just thought it was really crap. I really did. And the whole like, I can't even remember what the show was called. Something in the suburbs. I thought, I don't know. I just feel like it was really bland and not very exciting. Maybe if I read it when I was like, I guess a young adult, if I read it as I was 16, I'd probably enjoy it. But because I'm 25, I just didn't really like it that much so I needed to read something after this I'm glad I read it probably won't go buy anything again by this author but that's just me and my thoughts let me know if you've read this down below I wouldn't recommend it but that's another one ticked off my list I don't even know how many I've read this year I don't know what I'm gonna read next not too sure I've got a quite a good selection so I will see you in my next update. Now off to the library and I'm gonna return some books. So I just wanted to quickly do another wrap up of the, like the haul that I showed previously in my library book haul. I am now about to take back these three books. This is the Super Awkward Trilogy by Beth Garrard. Um, this is what they look like. I started this one. I must have got like 30 odd pages in. What chapter did I get to? Chapter four. I just found it too young. What are these doing? I found it too young. It was too cringy, um, and there was a lot of emphasis on things that didn't need to be emphasised. If that makes sense, I just felt like it was aimed at a younger audience. I couldn't relate to it, and I just didn't gel with it. And I thought, you know what? I'm not going to waste my time trying to force myself to read three books or even just one. Um, when I'm just not feeling it so I just wanted to quickly pop on before I take these back to say I did give it a go but I didn't have any luck so I'm now going to take these back so my pile's getting a little bit smaller from the haul that I obviously showed you I will probably do another library book haul not today because I look like this but um, I'm hoping to find some more books today so I'll keep them and do another haul at some point soon um, not too sure when that will go live but I just wanted to show you that I got these but I just wasn't feeling it so they're going to go back today. I'm back today with a little mini review of this. This is a book I picked up from the library. I didn't show it in my first library book haul but I've picked it up since. This is Freshers by Tom Ellen and Lucy Iverson. I picked this up because I heard um, a couple of like booktubers from the UK discuss this and I thought, yeah, it sounds quite good. So, the blurb says, Phoebe has been waiting all summer for uni to start and her life to finally begin. And knowing Luke Taylor is going there too makes the whole thing even more exciting. But Luke's relationship is secretly falling apart and campus life is proving to be, isn't proving to be the escape he thought it would be. When the two collide in the madness of Freshers' Week, everything changes and they both get sucked into each other's worlds in the mess most messy and intense and hilarious ways man imaginable. <clears throat> so like the blurb said it's about um two main characters so you've got two different points of view which i really liked throughout the book um and you basically follow them through the start of university it takes you i think it, i can't remember exactly but i feel like it only takes you up to christmas time so it's literally like the first like term 
and I really enjoyed it. I would like to see where it goes more, like whether they do another couple of books for like each different terms. That's the one thing that I really liked. This is the first ever like UK university book I've read. I've read like Fangirl um, by Rainbow Rowell which is set in a college but I've never really read anything UK based and I really wish I went to uni so it's nice to read about it. So yeah, I, I really liked the characters. I really liked the main character Phoebe and I really liked Luke and I really liked the friendship groups they make like throughout the story. One of my favourite characters in this is called Frankie. She's absolutely hilarious. She's crackers. She literally has lost the plot and she's so funny in this book. Um, this book was re it's really light-hearted. It's a really easy read. I read it in about a week. It was one of those I could pick up, put down. I wasn't fully invested in the characters. It's not one that I had to like fly through. I can't remember what I gave it on Goodreads. I think I gave it maybe three out of five stars. If there was a half star, I would give it 3.5 out of 5. Um, just because I enjoyed it, but it wasn't sort of like... I didn't get all the feels from it, if that makes sense. But I did, I find it really funny. So find it at your local library. I definitely recommend it. Let me know if you've read this or if you've read anything by these authors. They have a couple of books out. Um, but now I'm just going to get into the spoiler section just to discuss it a little bit more. is isn't a bad thing I can say about it. I really enjoyed the characters. I loved the friendships that they made. Um, I liked Phoebe. I liked Luke. I felt like Luke was a little bit of a wet lettuce towards the end when um, his ex, I think it's Abby, came back on the scene and he just completely fobbed off Phoebe. I just, just grab a pair and say, no, I'm not interested in you. What's done is done. But I guess it sort of made the story a little bit more interesting. Um, so I didn't really like that aspect of it. I just thought it was just dragged on a little bit too long. Um, what else? One of my favourite scenes in the book. Honestly, I was laughing out loud. I haven't laughed like that in a really, really long time. I think it's the way they describe things. The way they described Frankie and like the way that they described how she does things. I just found it hilarious. Like I've just turned to chapter 8. And it says, Frankie looked like a medieval king, her duvet dragging along the grass behind her. Too early, she was wailing. I didn't even know it could be this early. It's just funny. Like, I'm just 17. Honestly, this was... I don't remember the last time I've laughed so hard reading a book. It was absolutely hilarious. If you've read it, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, so Phoebe and Luke obviously had sex. And then they lost the condom. <laughs> Honestly, it was so funny to read and um, Luke was like what do we do she shut herself in the in the bathroom and then she got her friends <laughs> oh, I just read it again it's so funny so they were like googling how to get get the condom out of her and she put mate have you really like gone in there and tried Frankie said because people on here seem to think you can definitely get it in there people on where the internet cosmopolitan <laughs> It was just really funny, like the whole thing was just absolutely hilarious. And then how, that was it, Frankie got her um, her head torch and put it on her head and then just dove in and fished out this condom. It was just too good, too good. That was the highlight of the book for me. Um, the whole situation with Will, the guy that she was dating, dating, I didn't really like him at all. And I'm glad that he sort of got his comeuppance. Um, he was an asshole. Um... And I also really liked the guy that she worked with at the bakery. I can't remember his name. I just feel like there was something that should have progressed there. He was a really nice, steady friend for her. And he was there for her. And I just really liked her and liked him. I can't remember his name. I want to say it was Ben. Don't know if it was Ben. But the guy that works in the bakery and got her hot chocolate and stuff. I just really liked him. So, I don't really have too much to say just because... I read it quite a long time ago since I'm now filming this, so it's a little bit hazy and I've read different books. Definitely recommend it if you're looking for a really light, funny read. I thought it was great. So that is my little mini review of Freshers. Quickly discuss um, a couple of books that I need to sort of review and do in this little update section. I don't really know what I'm going to call this video. It's like a reading wrap up, I guess. Maybe that's what I'll call it. What have you got? A sticker. Thank you very much. Um, oh, I can't. My Kindle's died, so I can't show you um, one of the covers. So, first of all, 
this one. I've had this one for months. I forced myself to start this book and I feel like when you force yourself to even start a book that's never a good thing and it's not it's not that it's not genuine it's just not something that you choose to read like you haven't picked it out and you're not excited to read it i am only this far in i think it's like 60 odd pages 77 pages i haven't even stopped at a chapter which is so unlike me i normally read to a chapter i just can't get into it and i okay i know it's 77 pages but i'm just not interested in it um i want to know the story i'm dark again now I want to know the story, however, I just don't want to read it right now and I feel pressure because it, become, it belongs to the library and I've renewed it so many times that I have to return it and I just don't want to read it. So I'm going to write this one as a did not finish. I don't think I've ever did not or have not finished many books at all because I just love books in general. I just can't get into it so I'm going to completely write this one off. Let me know if you've read this and if it was good. I'll probably get it out again next year when I'm in the right headspace or when I actually want to read it but for now I'm just not going to read it. So that's Restore Me by Tahira Maffey. Maffey, Maffey, I'm not too sure. Um, it's a beautiful cover and I loved the first three books but I just can't bring myself just to start that book again or start that series. It just doesn't interest me and it's held in two different point of views and I just I've had so long away from that original series that I just can't get into it so I'm fine with that I've got so many other books that I'd like to read that I've got from the library and then the other one which I was going to show you the cover of on my kindle but I can't because it's died so I'll put a picture here is Scythe is it Scythe? I'm not too sure how to pronounce it but it was my book club pick for September uh, I don't know if many people took part in it um, but it was basically about a society where you have Grim Reapers as like a profession and there are two children or two, two teenagers that get picked to be training for Scythes and only one were to get the ring which is what you get and I really really enjoyed it I didn't know what to expect and it had a lot of hype on booktube and I loved it. It was so interesting and so many twists and turns. I read, I think I read it in maybe like three days and I thoroughly enjoyed it. A lot of the girls on book club that did read it loved it as well. I don't think I've heard any negativity about it so if you have read it and you've got negative comments let me know your thoughts and stuff below. Um, I can't wait to read the second. He's also currently writing a third. I'm not going to read the second anytime soon just because I want it to sort of be fresh in my memory when the next one comes out. But yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. I'll quickly go through a couple of spoiler sections. So stop watching now if you haven't read Scythe. Um, and I'll put a timestamp the, in the description where you can come back and listen to me chat. So my thoughts on Scythe. I thought it was pretty grim. The whole thought of like being chosen to die and having different ways to die and their different methods and stuff I just thought was really fascinating. I loved Faraday, I loved his ethos and how he went about it and how he was really like graceful and really caring and just like a really nice grim reaper I guess which is really weird. I was shocked when he died but when he died I didn't think he was dead which was obviously true because he then we found him was it in like Mexico or something he was in like a southern um American place and like hiding out I wasn't expecting that he had that romance with Curry Curie Marie Curie whatever her name was um I wasn't expecting that that was quite sad actually what else didn't I like? What else did I like? I liked both main characters. I found the whole point of view easy to read as well. I didn't struggle with any of that. I loved, I can't remember his name. Was it Alessandro, Ricardo? Something along those lines. I say I loved him, I can't bloody remember his name because I read it like three weeks ago. I loved the guy that was a part of Goddard's team that killed himself. That was grim, that whole scene when Goddard went into that place and murdered all of those children and then Rowan was like I'm not having this and 
chopped his head off and killed them all. That was fucking grim. Um, but I really, really enjoyed it. I... I would I recommend it to a lot of people actually. I recommended it to my nephew, which is why I don't have the book here. Um and he is he's quite young actually to read that book. He's eleven. Um but he's enjoying it. <laughs> I gave it to him. I was like, I don't think there's much swearing, but there is a lot of violence. He was like, It's okay, I've read Hunger Games because I got that for him for his Christmas present last year. I look a completely different colour because I just had to quickly take pee for a wee. Um what was I saying? I was quite hesitant to have that as a book club pick because it's quite different. But I thoroughly enjoyed it. I was actually going to dedicate a whole video to it. But it's been like three weeks since I read it. And I didn't sit down and film it straight away. Which I wish I did. But in the future I'll do some more like independent book reviews. So I'm sorry I didn't do that. I'm actually going to wrap up this video now. I don't know how many clips I've got. Because I've been filming them over the past month or so i haven't even edited or looked at what i've got so i'm sorry that this is going to be all put together the majority of the video will be me without makeup on so i'm i apologize for that but at the same time you know what i'm like i can't be bothered to put makeup on just for the sake of a video at the moment when i'm living in this carnage i'm sorry about the background and stuff as well but leave me a comment below let me know if you liked it let me know if you want to do some more or if you want me to do some more like mini wrap-ups with books from the library or just in general um i know my book videos don't get i don't know like a third of what my normal videos do but i don't do it for that i do it because i enjoy it and i don't care that i might only get 400 views because that's what i'm passionate about so hopefully you still like these sorts of videos like i've said before go and follow me over on my book club instagram it's linked down below in all of my videos but it's also book club with jess um, it is a private account, but I accept anyone that wants to be a part of it. I don't know why it's private, it just is. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and I'll see you all in my next one.